Okay, so now we can turn on the script editor by double click on the component. Okay, now here we check the input parameter double x, double y, double z, no problem. Now we can add our script here. Remember to type two tabs to make the indentation so that your code is easier to read. Okay. Now we want to create a point, right? So we type in point 3D, capital P, 3D. This is the data type of point for Rhino. And this is the name of the, uh, the data. And we have to use a variable name for it, right? So maybe we can call it a point. Okay, usually when you declare a variable, we use lower case to start with, okay? So, and it is a good habit to use meaningful name, okay? You do have to type more character usually, but it is a good habit to always use meaningful name uh, because later you or other people read your program it get, gives more hint. What is this variable about? Okay. So we you, you, uh, we use a full name point. So, and the type of point is a point 3D. And now we have to create the object because this is object-oriented programming, and point 3D is a kind of object. And for creating an object, first you need use a keyword called new. So this, this, name, this name should be like constant or we should we can give any kind of name to this. Yeah, the variable. You just use any name. And I would suggest that you use meaningful name. Of okay. course you can call it XYZ or whatever, okay? But uh, if this is a point, maybe you can call it point. Ah, oh, I think maybe it's, am I wrong? Semi-column expand. Oh, okay. I, because I haven't finished it yet. Okay, new. And you want to create a new object, and then you have to tell you what kind of object you want to create. Okay, and see, you always make use of this hint. So these are the suggestions, and usually you can find whatever you want here. Okay, point 3D. So we just choose this point 3D. Okay, and then how you want to create this point 3D? You type in parentheses, the left parentheses. Okay, so point 3D, you want to construct a point 3D, but there is many ways. There are many ways to construct point 3D. Here it says there are five methods. One or five, right? And this is the first one of the totally five different methods to construct a point. Okay? And the way to construct a point, you can do it by specifying x, y, and z coordinate. And all of them, they are double. So you give three doubles. And then the constructor will use these three doubles as the x, y, z coordinate to create the point. Okay? And where we can find the three? Remember? We have used x, y, z as our input parameter, right? So here we simply type in x, comma, y, comma, and z. And you don't need comma for the last one, so you use the right parenthesis to close it and then don't forget you always need semicolon okay so we finish this statement 
But we need to do one more thing. You create, you declare a variable called point, right? And then you create a new object. And the class of this object, the type of this object is a point, 3D. And you use this the constructor of these points of 3D by specifying x, y, z coordinate, and you derive the value from the input, right? Okay, so now you have the point. But now you have to assign this point to A, because this is the value that you actually output to the outside environment of this component. So the next thing you do, you assign A to point. So you type in A equal to point, and then semicolon. Okay, and then click OK. And we can check if A is what we want. See? And if you change something, for example, if you want to use a slider to for the x coordinate of it, and you can see the x coordinate of this point become 2.5, and then when you change the value, the function is recalculated any time when you change the value of any of its input, then you get another point. If you take a look at this uh, Rhino environment, oh, where's my grasshopper? Oh no, sorry. Hmm. Where is my grasshopper? Okay. Uh, I think we should be able to see, okay, our point is here. Okay, you see our point is here. And if you slide the X, the slider, then you can see the point is also moving. Okay, not only on the Rhino canvas, but also in the text panel of Grasshopper. Okay, so now this is the first C sharp script for you to create some geometric entity, which is a point. Okay, so if you uh, turn on this image, then you can see here. Okay, first, we declare the x, y, z. Oh no, here, you have only x and y, okay. But the exercise that we just did, we have x, y, z coordinate. And then you declare a point. And this time, the variable name is called my point. And first, you have to declare the type of the point, which is a point 3D. And remember, for this kind of data type, uh, except some very basic data type, like integer, like double, they have lowercase characters. But for other data type, which are classes of objects, they are all started with capital letter, so point 3D. If you type lowercase point 3D, then it won't recognize that. Okay? So my point is a data type, point 3D. And then you assign this one, whatever on the right-hand side of uh, equal sign, 
uh, you use this to assign to the variable. And the new is a key word. It's a, yeah, it's a key word to create new object. And then you have to say, what is the constructor of the new object? We use point 3D as the constructor of the new object. And there are five different ways to create, to construct a point. And we choose the first one of that, which is to specify x, y, and z coordinate. And then after it constructs the point, then the result will be assigned to the variable that you have just declared, which is my point. And then the last statement, assign my point to A. Get it? We have to assign the uh, A equal to my point? Yeah. Otherwise, you don't get the output. See? We have the output here is A. It's not my point. You get it? It's, okay? So you have to assign. Otherwise, you get nothing. Okay. Okay, for example, if I quote out I don't want to erase it, but I want to uh, uh, quote it out, which means the computer will not execute it. I can type double slash. Then you see this statement become green. For the green statement, it means computer won't do anything for that. So if I quote out this part and I click OK, then A is new. New means yeah. nothing. Okay? Sure. Because you didn't assign any value to A inside this component. Okay? So this is must. We have to assign the result to the variable that we have used for output the data. Okay. Get it? Then we can go on. Are you following me? No problem? OK. Now, go back to the, so this one? Yeah. So it means this, this two name uh, should be same. Two should be the same. Yeah, if you mistype, sometimes you uh, mess up with the capital letter, with the lowercase letter, then, then it won't work, OK? Okay, now this is the if statement. Actually, because I, I, I just say that mostly what you can do in C sharp, you can do it with Grasshopper, right? This is not uh, in a way it's correct, but in some other say it's not correct. For example, in Grasshopper, it will be difficult. Not impossible, but difficult to do something like this. Okay? If you ask the computer to check some certain condition, okay? if the condition is true, if it happens like that, then you do this. If the thing that you specify doesn't happen, then you, you do the other. Thing. Okay, so in this case, we want to compare A with B. There are two numbers. If A are large, is larger than B, then you want the computer to print A larger than B. If A is not larger than B, which means this is false, then computer will do this, print B is larger or equal to A. If you want the computer to do this, then it is easier to do it in C sharp instead of doing it in Grasshopper. Why is that? Maybe later we have time to, to discuss. I will explain it to you. But right now, you just simply take it. Okay? So we will use this. And this is the way to say this in C sharp. Okay, uh, one thing I would say, oh, 
to bright. Computer programming is just like talking. Okay? Right now I'm talking to you in English. I have to practice. I mean, when I was a student, actually English is the subject that I hate. <laughs> okay? I'm very, very bad in English. Okay? Until, until, uh, not even when I was in the state. I was in state for my master degree, but at that time I wasn't really able to talk in English. And there is a the school I was in Carnegie Mellon, and the school has a, uh, someone to interview. I mean, for all foreign students, they interview all foreign students. Okay, and I went, and then uh, the they, uh, someone interviewed me, and then talked to me, and then. After two weeks, I received a letter, and it's the comment of this reviewer. And I recognized one word, it said, uncommunicatable. <laughs> okay? And only after, afterwards, I went to Switzerland, Zurich, and uh, I also talk in English because I cannot speak German anymore. Okay? Only after that, I become more and more able to communicate in Okay, so this is just like programming. But instead of talking to other people, programming is you talk to a computer. And simply to know the language or to master the grammar is not enough. You have to talk, 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 talk. Okay? So this is the key to learn programming. Don't read books, don't listen to me, simply listen to I explain to you whatever I know, but that will not help too much. It will help unless you practice. Just like you learn a language, a foreign language, okay? You need to talk. It's wrong, it's okay. Computer will tell you that it doesn't understand what you say and you will complain. And then you have to listen to him, see, oh, what is wrong? Why I, 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 what I think I'm talking to you like this, but you don't understand, okay? And you try to correct yourself, and then you practice, practice, and one day you find that you can talk to computer very well, okay? You become communicatable. Computer will think that you are communicatable. So this is important. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. So, now we want to tell the computer to do this kind of thing, conditional statement. Now, okay, I will simply open this for you and I explain it to you and then you will practice yourself. Okay. So that's the reason why I say you download the image but not download the script file, okay? Because you have to type in every character yourself. Don't even copy and paste, okay? Unless you have already got a lot of practice. You type in every individual letters, okay? So first, of course, you need to declare, right? You change the name of the input parameter for both A and B, and don't forget to declare the data type. They should be numbers, right? Declare them as double, and you double click, and then you have this, uh, let me enlarge the characters. Okay. So, kind of straightforward, right? So you have double A, double B, and this is your output. If, this is a keyword. Okay, inside the character, inside the script editor, all keywords are in blue. Okay, for this private void, they are all keywords. Reserve the keyword. So, when you declare your variable, don't use this reserved keyword. 
you cannot call your variable void because it is used by the system. Okay? You never call your variable if. Okay? Never call your uh, your variable else because they are all reserved keywords. And how can you know that it is reserved? When you type in this keyword, it becomes blue. Then you know this is keyword. So you should not use any name which is shown in blue as a variable. Okay? If it is black, then it's okay. If it is blue, then you have to change another name. If, and then you always have a pair of parentheses to specify what kind of condition that you want to check. Okay? And you can see that whatever inside this pair of parentheses, the result of this statement has to be either true or false. You can say if 3 plus 4, then what does it mean? 3 plus 4, the result is a number, is not a boolean. Boolean means it has to be either true or false. So you can type in A larger than B, the computer will compare A with B. If A is actually larger than B, then the result of this statement is true. If A is not larger than B, then the result of this, I should say expression, not statement, the result of this expression is false. Okay? And if whatever specified inside this pair of parentheses is true, then the computer will do the first part that you specify. The first part is enclosed in a pair of curly brackets. So what will I do when I have to type in, type it from scratch? Okay. You just ignore the part, okay? I just retype this part, and you can see how I do it. I type in the keyword if, right? And then you always have this uh, parenthesis, parenthesis, and then A, okay? Larger than B, parenthesis to close it, and then uh, for me, I would type in a curly bracket right after, but some people prefer to have an enter first, okay? And then add a new line, and the text editor will automatically indent it for you, but then you can close another, okay? So why you do this first, and then you add in whatever inside? This is a good habit because this guarantees that you have the structure correct. Because sometimes after you type in the left bracket, it do something, and then you forget to type in the right bracket. Okay? So it is kind of good habit. You first have both left and right bracket, and then afterward you add whatever inside. Okay? And then I add print see this print p is capital because it is a system function this is predefined function you don't have to say what is print because it is already defined in the system so i want to print it out and whatever you want to print you have a pair of bracket of, of uh, parentheses and then inside the print you type in some text that you want to print for example okay maybe I want to say this hello world a is larger than B and then you have to enclose the text inside to double quote because if you don't have the double quote computer will try to understand this hello 
Allah H E L L. Am I spelling it wrong? H E L L O W. H E L L O W. No W. No the oh hello yeah. Okay. If you don't have the double quote, then computer will regard hello as a variable, right? It cannot distinguish. So it will try to find what is hello, what is the data type of it. And you cannot find it because you haven't declared it. So it could be wrong. Computer cannot understand what you say. But if you put double quote to enclose them, then the computer will understand. Oh, this is a piece of text. And you want to print this text out to the console. Console means a window, specific window, which the computer can communicate with you. Okay? When you want to print something out, means you ask the computer to print this message to the console. Okay? Which is not the output of the, the function. No, it's not output. It simply print a message to the console. Console is like a window that you monitor something. Okay. So if A is larger than B, I want to print out hello world. Oh, my spelling is all wrong. A is larger than B. W O R L D. Okay? And what happened if A is not larger than B? Then you use another keyword this called the, else. This is, this is word. This is not word. Hmm? Sorry? This is word. W O R D. No, 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 no. Usually when you write computer program, we say hello world. Hello world. Hello world. I mean, in many cases, people use this as the first programming exercise. Hello world. Hello. Yeah. Else, okay, and remember you also need a pair of curly bracket to mark the block. We call this a block. Whatever inside a pair of curly bracket, we call it a block of code. Okay? It will do whatever inside this pair and right now, for if statement, we have only one statement that, uh, oh, sorry, I forget to put parentheses. Okay, I have to put the right parentheses and a semicolon. Okay, and if A is not larger than B, I want to print Okay, for example, I want to say, oh, A is not larger than B. Okay, and uh, I think if this is nicer, then I can remove whatever I had. So now I rewrite the script. Okay, hopefully, yeah, it works. Here, so this is the script that I have just changed. See, now, okay, and see, now I'm not connecting to A. A is supposed to be output, but A is nothing because I haven't assigned any value to A, right? So there's nothing in A. But if you connect the text panel to out, it shows whatever message it prints printed. Hello world, A is larger than B. But if I change the value, then when this slider, the value here is, even when they are equal, still A is not larger than B. Okay? And also, 
We don't worry about this x and y. Okay, whatever they are called, when they send in the value to C sharp, they become A and B. Okay. Get it? So now you know how to do the if statement. We can also edit it. Sorry? We can also put E instead of X. We can put it there. Whatever name. Okay? You can call them whatever. Doesn't matter. But if you send it to A, then it becomes A inside this C sharp script. Okay. Okay, can go on. How about this one? Can you try to do this? Uh, no, 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 no. Let me see. Okay, this is more complicated. I will explain it. Now, we want to do more complicated things. We want to print number series. Okay, we input two numbers. If we input zero to five, then I want the script to print out to count from zero to five. So zero, one, two, three, four. And then count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay? But what happens if x is larger than y? So it will change x and y so that it always count from the smaller to the larger. And then from larger to the smaller. Okay? How can we do this? First, we have to check if x is larger than y, right? And what can you do if x is smaller than, oh no, sorry, if x is larger than y? We have to switch the two values, right? We always start from the smaller one and then we count up to the larger one. But what happened? Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I start from a simpler case. Okay. Let let let's do it from scratch. Okay. Forget what I said. I want to input two numbers. They are both integers. Maybe say three. And then seven. Okay, I want to count from whatever input from the first number to the second number. So right now we want to do loops. Okay, and uh, first thing we declare the data type of X and Y. You click the right mouse button. If you are happy with these two variable name, then it's okay. Then type in, but this time we need integers, whole numbers. So we choose integer. And also for the Y, we do the same thing. We declare the data type of it to be integer. Okay, and then we double click to open the script editor. Why do you need integers here? Because we want to count. We want to create a number series, right? Three, four, five, six. We want the only number. whole numbers. Okay. Of course, if you use double, it is okay. But if we are sure that there are always integers, then it is good that you declare it as a integer. Okay, and then type in the... Okay, so now we are going to do our first for statement. Start with the keyword for. You see it is blue now. And then the parentheses. In the for statement, the first thing you specify 
the initial situation. When we want to count something, we need one variable to count. Okay? And it's like a rule or a habit. Usually we call it I. I means index. Okay? So I is an integer. So we have to declare it. Don't forget. It is an integer. So you say I and T and then a space and then I. I is an integer and then we want to initialize this I with X, right? First, I is equal to X. I think we, we need semicolon, okay? And then, this is a loop, which means you want to do the same thing many, many times until something happened. Okay, so the second part of this for loop, you specify the condition when you should terminate the loop, when you should not do the same thing again if something happened. Okay, so if i is larger than, oh no, sorry. We should keep on doing if the situation is still true, okay? So if i is sl still smaller than y, then we keep on doing the same thing, okay? Semicolon, and the third thing you say, what do you want to do for every loop, every iteration? Every time you do it, I have to add one to i, and you type i plus plus. i plus plus means i is equal to i plus one. You see, this is not a comparison. This is called an assignment. i become i plus one. This is not saying that i is equal to i plus one. I mean, it can never be true like this. But in this case, this equal sign means we assign the value of i plus 1 to i. So when the computer does this, when if i is equal to 0, then after this statement is executed, i become 1. If i is 1 already, then i will become 2. If i is 99, then after this, i become 100. Okay? So this is an action. It's not a comparison. It's not comparing these two numbers. This is different from i smaller than i plus 1. In this case, it will return true, right? This is a comparison. But this is not a comparison. This is assignment. What happens if you want to compare two numbers? In Shisha, and also in many programming languages, you, you have to type in equal twice. You say, I equal equal to I. Then you will get true. You say, I equal equal I plus one, then you get false. Okay? So if you want to compare two values to see if they are equal to each other, then you type twice equal. But this is not the case. Here, uh, I want to increase i by 1. So there are different ways of saying that. So the more uh, clear is like i equal to i plus 1, semicolon. Okay, but I think this one starts from C language. Because this is used so frequently, and there is some reason, I mean, for speeding up the computer operation, somehow this one becomes more popular. You simply type it 
I++. Remember, this is so important in many programming languages, including C sharp. I++ means increase the value of I by 1. Okay? And because this is the last statement inside this parenthesis, so we don't need semicolon. Okay? And then you follow with a block that specify whatever you want to do inside this for loop. Okay, so click enter and then a curly bracket and then enter again another curly bracket to close it and then you add in the statement that you want to do. Now maybe we can print. Remember capital P we want to print the value of I. Okay? And with print we print text. Okay. So somehow we have to convert I to a string. A string is a text, okay? I is an integer, right? It is a number, it's not a text. But if we want to print it, we have to convert this number to a text that represents this number. And how can we convert an integer to a text? We have to use a method for integers. And to use a method for an object, you use period. I point and then capital to string. And then an empty pair of parentheses. And then you close it. I hope I'm doing it correctly. Okay, and let me check if the result is correct. So I use the text panel to see. Okay, it is correct. You see, start from three to count, okay, until it is not smaller than seven. Okay, so to count and to print, right? So I print. 3 and then increase 3 by 1 so print 4 and print 5 print 6 but when i is equal to 7 then the condition is no longer true inside the if statement right if i click this one the first time i is equal to x right and x is 3 right initially x is 3 and then it ch it will check if i is smaller than y, that's right, because y is 7, 3 is smaller than 7, then it will do this print i to 3. To 3 means convert the i, which is an integer, to a piece of text, and then print it on the console. Okay? And after it has done, done this, go back to the loop, and then check the condition, Oh, sorry. It will do this first. It will do I plus plus. So I, before it is three, right? And after I plus plus, it become four. And then after it become four, it will check again if I is smaller than Y. I is four and Y is seven. So it is true. So if it is true, then we do this again. So this time we print i. This time i is equal to 4. So we print 4. And then after you've done this, you will do i++. plus plus. So now i become 5. And then the system will check if i is smaller than y, which is 7. So it is true. Do it again to print 5. Okay. After you print 5, i++ plus plus becomes 6. And then check if 6 is smaller than 7. Then print 6. After you print 6, i become one more. So i equal, equal to 7. But this time, 7 
is not smaller than 7. So it won't do it. So it does not print 7. And then finish the loop. Okay? Terminate the loop. And then you finish everything. So you see the result is 3, 4, 5, 6. No, 7. And if you change the value of x, so it will start from 0 instead of from 3. And you can also change the value of y. And what happens if x and y are the same? And it does nothing. Why it does nothing? We get into the loop and see x is 2, y is 2 as well. So initially, i equal to x, so i is 2, right? Then it will check if 2 is smaller than 2. No, 2 is not smaller than 2. So this is false. If this is false, then it wouldn't do anything inside the block. Okay? So it get out of this loop without printing anything. Okay. So that is the reason why we see no data here. Okay, And what happens if x is larger than y? Of course, it does nothing. Get it? You follow me? Yes? yes? No problem? Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, if we want to deal with this situation, how if x is larger than y? Okay. Uh, maybe I will first. We do the exercise for for loop one more time. Okay. So. If x is larger than y, then we want to count down before we count up, right? Now we can count down. So we start from i equal to 6 and then compare. If i is larger than y, then we print out y. But every time we have to reduce i by 1 because this time we want to count down. Get it? So, if we have 6 and 2, then we want the output to be 6, 5, 4, 3. Can you do this? Without my instruction? Yes. Yes? Okay, try it. Try it. Okay. I'm going out to... to to drink my coffee, okay, and come back in two minutes and see what you do, okay? One question. Yeah. A period. A method. Okay. This is object-oriented programming. So everything is object. Even a number is an object, and associated with any object. There are methods that the object knows what to do. So you're telling the integer, I say, please convert yourself into a texture representation. And the way to tell 
an integer to do this, the keyword, the magic word is called to string. String means a text. So convert yourself into a string and then give it to me. Okay? And for doing this, you don't need to specify any parameter. So that's the reason why you have a pair of branches with nothing inside. Because you don't need any parameter to activate this message. Okay. Okay, remember you need a period. Yeah? Could you repeat the question again? Okay. Uh, I would say this is not so easy, okay, but, but I know you are very smart. Right now we have this com uh, this component. When we have x smaller than y, it will count up, right? If we have like 2 and 6, uh, where is my cursor? Okay, here. Okay, so it knows what to do. 2, 3, 4, 5. But what happens if I have the number reverse 6 and 2? Then it does nothing. But assuming that I'm the customer, I, I ask you to write a function and say, oh, when x is larger than y, then please count down for me. So the program has to print 6, 5, 4, 3. OK, get it? Before we know how to count up, but now I want to think about count down. But that is not enough. It also has to distinguish if x is larger than y or if x is smaller than y. Maybe I should give you some more hint, OK? I can wait a few minutes. OK, now we have a for loop, right? But before. How do you know that you need this for loop or you need the other for loop? There are many different ways of doing it, but now I just suggest you, okay, the this, this easiest way or the simplest way, if x is larger than y, right? Then, oh sorry, smaller. Then we do exactly what we have done so far, sorry, I start a new line and then type in a pair of, sorry, a pair of curly bracket, right? And what inside the bracket is exactly what we have done, right? So we copy this and then paste it inside. So if x is smaller than y, then we do this for loop. But what happens if x is not? Okay, so this is my hint. First, I check if x is smaller than y. If this is true, then I do this to count up, right? But what happens if x is not smaller than y? Then we have to count down. How can you modify this? Right now it is count up, but how can you modify this so that it will count down? And another hint is that if you want to count down, then you say, Instead of, before we have i++, plus plus, right? <coughs> if we want to count down, then we say i minus minus. OK, this means i is reduced by 1 every time it is activated. OK, so this is the way to count down. But then you have to write your for loop so that the print statement will print I every time reduced by one until 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 something happens. Okay.
Okay, there's uh, one thing I think you should know is that it's quite common that you fail to have match the left and right bracket, either the regular parentheses or square bracket or curly bracket. You know what is curly bracket, okay? And square bracket, they always appear as pairs. And sometimes you have many nested brackets. And it, in that situation, it's very easy to mismatch them. So the ad editor actually it tries to help you to match the bracket. So for example here, if I put mouse cursor here, right after a right curly bracket, then it will try to find the matching left bracket, which is this one. You can see this one is darkened, right? So if I have my cursor here, then it darkened the other counterpart here, which is the curly bracket here. And also for parentheses, if I put my cursor here, it will darken its counterpart, which is here. So you can use this to check if all brackets are matched. Okay? And uh, sometimes your program cannot run simply because you don't have a match bracket or curly bracket or parentheses. situation is not uh, x smaller than y and y either uh, y is uh, small x is bigger than y that means when x equals to y the system is fail the system will print nothing in this case but if you want to do this okay okay if I are more ambitious you use else if okay and uh, x is larger than y then you count down right uh -huh. but then there's another situation yeah. so, which is and you don't have to say it because yeah. there's only one situation okay and also you need a pair no, no, something is wrong. Something is wrong. I need, I need one more bracket. No, something is wrong. If. Else if no, I think something is wrong. I am not quite sure. Uh, else if
No, no, sorry. Else if is not a keyword. Somehow I misspell it. E L. Uh, what did you say, Ali? You need a space? Okay. Uh, really? Because it was not showing a function, so no one said blue. E L S F, I think. No. Okay, I have to find. Okay, I, because I don't remember. E L I F? No. Like this? Else if? But some of these indentations are very strange. Uh, hmm? But if there are more conditions, no, no, no. There is a there is a yeah, keyword to do this, but I, I just don't remember. Because it became, it became uh, blue, so it's okay. Anyway, let me try it. Okay, yeah, I think this is correct. Else, space, and if. Okay? Else space if if you really want to check all of them. And then you have to add the countdown for loop in between these two curly brackets.
should say, I what do you 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 reduce I, but you think that you want X. And so it's always true. First, you always need to specify your terminate condition. The terminate condition is when this is no longer true. Okay? Because it will do it again and again and again if it is true. And the second thing is that you have to do something to change the situation. Otherwise, if something is true, it will always be true, right? unless you change something in the environment. Otherwise, whatever is true will be always true. Get it? If you're married to someone, you, you never have a fight. Then you are married to him or her forever, right? But if you fight to each other, then say, okay, we settle with divorce then. So if you never fight, then you marry to him or her forever. And if you don't like this, then somehow you have to find a situation to fight with her or with him. Okay? Not a good uh, thing to say, but you need to do something. So you change I every time until this is no longer true. Then the follow will be terminated. And if you write a program that will never terminate, then you cannot do anything on it. The only thing you can do is to kill the process. In some cases, okay, for some programs, it will allow you to terminate it by clicking, okay, sorry, maybe you can try Control C or Control Z, I'm not sure. Usually I will try Escape. If it doesn't work, and I type Control C, and perhaps Control Z, I'm not quite sure. And if none of them work, then kill the process. And you have to start it over again. If unfortunately you didn't save your program, then you have to write the program again. Okay? Okay, and what happened to him is he checked X smaller than Y and then increased I by one, by one. But because I is not inside this statement, so X, if X is smaller than Y, then it is always true. No matter what you do, whatever you print, whatever you change to I, X is always true smaller than y. So make sure that whatever you have here will one day make this situation change this situation. Okay? Anyone has done it? Countdown? Okay, good, good. You get the result? Okay. Now, I will show you. If you haven't done it yet, then I will do it here. So, we have a follow-up, right? Yes. So, maybe we can copy the whole thing. Paste it. Okay? But this time, we want to count down, right? So, I is equal to X, right? And uh, I as long as it is still larger than y, 
then we count down minus minus I think that's it right Ari you think what do you think is it correct what you okay. do I did yeah I think so I think so okay let me click OK so what happens if x is larger than y you see 6 and then it prints yeah, 6 it's 5 4 3 right. and then if it is reverse x is smaller than 1 2 3 4 and if x is equal to y then print nothing okay so this is what the way of doing it and if I let you see the examples here I do it uh, another way okay first we check the seat condition if x is larger than y then I swap x with y I make x to be y y to be x and then count up count up yeah uh, in many cases we do it like this first we have to check the input if the input is okay then we do something if the input is not okay then we may try to fix the input sometimes we like to write a program which is more user friendly so we take care of the user of the dumb user okay for example if this program always suppose you are supposed to give a number x which is always smaller than y but maybe there are some dumb user uh, they don't realize this so they uh, mess up the input order but if you the program is very friendly then you fix the error for the user anyway so first part of your program maybe you check if something is happened and you know how to fix it and you do it but this is kind of programming technique when you switch you want to switch the value of x and y actually you need to create one more variable as a temporary holder to hold the value Otherwise, you cannot simply say, okay, if we have first, you have x equal to 2, y equal to 3, but now we want to swap to exchange x with y. Can you say, let x equal to y and then y equal to x what happens if you do this? after you do this, what is the value of x? anyone want to answer this? C. Hmm? C. 3 yeah, and then what is y? C. 3 so you lost information why after you do this x is 3 right and then, then you say y equal to x but x is 3 so y is 3 but what you want to do is you want to make you want to switch the two right you want x to be 3 and y to be 2 right but with this you cannot swap which means you need a temporary holder to hold the information until you successfully swap both of them. So you need to declare another variable before you assign them. You have to declare, if they are all integer, you say i and t, and usually maybe we can use the variable for 10 which means it is a temporary variable and you initialize it with x okay so it's a 
message holder or data holder and then now it is safe that you can assign y to x and then you assign i sorry to y understand this if original x is 2 then 10 is 2 right and now you assign y to x then x will become 3 okay and the last step you assign 10 to y so y will become 2 so you get what you want. So this is a technique to swap the value of two variables and you always need a temporary data holder. Okay. So with this I just want to show it to you. And here I use t instead of n. Okay? So it check if x is larger than y, then I swap the two value and then I do exactly the same thing. Okay, okay let's go on. And uh, I think for the last maybe 30 minutes, you and uh, you you two will have your presentation, right? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I don't have break but you even need to uh, to drink water to do whatever you simply uh, just just do it okay so fine and if you think you miss something you just ask me okay I will explain it again no problem okay so yeah actually here is the way to count down right I equal to y I larger than y and I minus minus, minus. Okay, now we want to have list. Before we print it out, right? But what happened? We want to keep the list of values instead of printing it out. Because if you print it out, you can only watch it. You cannot do anything. Uh, yes and no. I mean, of course, when you print it out, actually, what we can do... You see, this list coming from this out, actually, it is a printed message. But in Grasshopper, we can make use of this list to do something. Okay. But this is not... A regular way I would say don't do this okay this is not a good style of programming because this message are supposed to be printed out in console okay and it's because you are using grasshopper so you can do this but no this is not a good way if you really want to use make use of this list of data then you need to find a way to output that as the list. Okay, now we're going to do exactly like that. So now I will explain this to you. So first, we declare a variable. This variable is double. Okay, but now it's different. In front of this double, we have a keyword say list so you can read it like this this is a list of double with this angle bracket it means of something so you read list of double my numbers is a list of double okay and the assignment here this equal sign we can call it assignment we want to create a new list of double Okay? And this is the constructor of a list of double. So a constructor is like a function, so it takes 
a pair of parentheses. But this constructor, we don't need to specify any parameters. But then, if we want to, if we want to initialize this list of double with some value, then we use a pair of curly bracket to enclose the numbers that we want to initialize the list. Okay, so with this, it will create a list of two numbers. The first of it is 0 0.5, and the second of the list is 3.14, and this will become the initial values for the list, and this list we call it my numbers. Okay, the first part declare that my numbers is a list of double. Okay, the second part of this assignment create a list of double and then initialize this list of double with the values which are inside of this pair of curly bracket. <coughs> <Wow. coughs> okay, and then the number, uh, sorry, the list of double, which is also an object. And an object has knowledge about itself. So it knows what to do when you send a message to it. To it. How you send a message? You have a period and then say, specify some, something it knows what to do. And this keyword is associated with the kind of object called list. So all this knows how to add a value to itself. It will obtain a value to itself. So after this, it will add 1.23 at the end of the list. Okay, and again, add another value at the end of the list. So after two, these two statements, the list will contain four numbers. Get it? It is initialized with these two, and then it add one, add two, and then print it, but also assign the output variable A with my numbers. Uh, Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, this is different. Why there is an one? Okay, sorry. Print I. Okay, so this is the index here. I, right? We want to print a specific number in the list. So we use square bracket, and inside the square bracket, we have the index to indicate which value in the list is the one that you want. Okay, and remember, we always index a list from zero, right? So if i is one, which means it is the second value, so the second value of the list is 3.14, get it? Okay, so we have to practice. So we started from scratch, mass C sharp. Okay, and we need one parenthesis, right? Uh, one, no, uh, one parameter. So we scroll it up and then remove one parameter and then re rename x as i. Okay, and the type key, it should be an integer because it is going to be used as an index to a list. Okay, and uh, we get our input, uh, three. Use a slider for integer. Okay, double click. Okay, now 
we want to keep a list of value. Okay. First, we declare a variable as a list of doubles, capital L, and then angle bracket. You know what is angle bracket, right? And then double. OK. It is weird in my uh, script editor. If I don't have this space, it will do something weird. OK, I don't know why, but I realize that I always need a space. But you don't need this space before this angle bracket. Okay. List of double, and then space, and then my name of the variable, the name of the variable is say my numbers. Okay, and here is a good habit to name your variable in a meaningful way. And sometimes in order to make it meaningful, you need more than one word, right? Okay? And always you start with a lowercase character. But what happens if you need more than one word? You have to distinguish them. But you cannot use space, right? If you use space, then it becomes separated. So you start with a capital character to mark the beginning of the next word. Okay, so my N is lowercase number with capital N. So we can read it very easily. Sometimes you can have even more words for one character, but then you mark the beginning of the word with a capital letter, then you can read it very easily without having space in between the words. Okay? So this is a way to make meaningful name for variables, especially when you need to have more than one word to make it meaningful. Okay, so my numbers. Okay, if you always keep this rule, then the chance that you misspell your variable is less. First, because these names are always meaningful. Second, you know exactly when to have capital letters and when to have lowercase letters. So it's important to keep this as a constant rule for your naming of variables. Okay. Okay, so my numbers is a list of double, and then I have to initialize it with some something, right? So equal sign, and I want to create a new list. So I have the keyword say new, and this is a list of double. Okay. And you see, object belongs to some classes. Okay. And for every class of object, there is always a specific way or specific ways to construct this object, this class of object. And this type of functions are called constructors. Okay. So, and the constructor always are named the same as the name of the type of object or the class of object. So, this is the constructor. This is the type of the object, which is list of double. Okay? But then now here, it is a constructor. A constructor that can construct this type of object. It is called with the, exactly the same name. And a constructor is a function. When you have a function, you always need a pair of parentheses. No matter if you need parameters or not. Okay? Most function requires parameters. But there are some functions that require no parameters. In case of functions that require no parameters, you use empty pair of parentheses. Okay? And in this case, it takes no parameters, so empty. And then 
you initialize the values okay I just type in something 1.0 2.0 or 2.2 okay finished and then semicolon okay enter okay hopefully I uh, this is correct then I have okay let me let me let me show you which I just assign a to be my numbers okay and then finish and then we can see what happened? Okay, I use a text panel to show what is A. You see, so we initialize the list of numbers with 1 and 2.2. So you get exactly like that. Okay, so this is that's what we have expected. Now, I want to append. Append means to add something at the end of a list. So we activate a method. My number is an object. Okay, the object knows some method which relate to itself. And one of the method of list is called add with capital A. Okay, I want to add a new value, which is maybe 3.14, no, no, 3.3, .3, okay? Okay, and uh, I want more, my number, my numbers, add 4.4, .4. okay? What happened if we do this? Now the list has four values 1, 2.2, 3.3, 4.4. Okay, so get it? So you know how to create a list, you know how to append values to a list, you know how to initialize values to a list. And now I want to add one more thing I want to access value of the list. Okay, to access something from a list, you need to specify the index of the value okay so if we want to print it out capital P and then my number okay how to specify the index of it use a pair of square bracket and then the index okay now we use this input parameter called i okay and remember my numbers is a list right and after we specify an index of it what you get is a double because it is the list of double now we want to access one value in this list of double then we get a double right okay and if you want to print a double, what you need to do to convert it to a string. So remember, we have this method called to string, and this is a method. It is also a function without any parameters. So we need an empty pair of parentheses, and Remember, we need one more right parenthesis to enclose the print statement. Okay, and hopefully this is true. This is okay. Okay, and in order to see what it prints, we need another text panel and then connect this text panel to out. Okay, so now the function create a list and inside the list there are four numbers 1, 2.2, 3.3, 4.4 .4, and I want to print out the third value of it but starting from the zeros right so when I say the third it should be 4.4 .4.
check here in front of this tag panel there are the it is the index so three is the index so what you get is here which is indeed the fourth one okay but the index is three you get 4.4 get it okay wow it's four o'clock sorry i should let you do your job Okay. Okay. Do it quickly. Okay. And then you can uh, leave your slide on the maybe uh, on the discussion board. Can you can you do that? Attach a file to it. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Sure. Okay. So everybody can can watch it. Can I uh, No, I switch to 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 this machine. Okay. So you can put it here. Put it here. And I try to switch to. Uh, how can I do it? Huh? What happened? No? It won't work? Tension. Bring the tension there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this was the paper. It's uh, assigned by my professor, and I have to. Uh, um, I want to go through it uh, quickly because we don't have time. So first of all, we have to look at uh, about the title. Process of uh, light uh, manufacturing of the flaring of the lower uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, basically, the process of light mean that uh, the. Uh, OSIS the, uh, is uh, called to a place where there is a, a very good place surrounding by uh, not good places like a, 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 like this is a good place and surrounded by a desert area. So this OSIS of light mean that there is a light of uh, the there is light uh, on one place and uh, lower above the way. I will leave you show. Uh, Have you been to that building? Sorry? Have you been to that building? No, no. no. Uh, I was been to Dubai, but no, never been there. Okay. So the manufacturing of clearing of layer Abu uh, about Dubai, it means that the clearing of structure of stars, like the 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 boom, like uh, this is a boom. This is the clearing of the uh, aluminium structure on the steel. So we let you uh, we we can show here. This is the outlines introduction dimension and structure clearing of support structure mathematical specs. In a very good video I found uh, in YouTube, YouTube link for uh, you if you want to uh, see the uh, watch the video. So this is the oral introduction. Museum construction uh, constructing work started in uh, 26 May 2009 and inaugurated on uh, 8 November 2017. Almost um, we can say eight or nine years um, uh, it's spent to complete this project. So this pro this is uh, basically a museum. Um, this is called a very historical and a very good uh, museum uh, in in the history of Arabic uh, Arabic uh, uh, areas, uh, Arabic countries. The museum is a part of 30-year agreement between the city of Abu Dubai and the French government. This is a 30-year agreement be between the French government and uh, Abu Dubai. The final cost of the construction is expected to be about 600 million. This is the uh, overall uh, expected uh, um, uh, cost of our the uh, this uh, uh, this uh, museum. So architecture. This is uh, designed by the Jean's, Jean Jean no Noel, French French. Uh, this was the uh, a French architecture uh, engineer uh, who um, designed this uh, architecture for this uh, museum. Basically, it is a museum as a traditional landscape of UAE. It means the uh, traditional landscape means that there is a 
light there's a rain of light this is called the uh, rain of light this is a traditional like uh, arabic people like uh, uh, too much thing which uh, belongs to their traditions things so they make their uh, you can see from here these are the uh, these are uh, holes uh, inside the dome so the light when the when there is a, a day so the um, so the roof is not waterproof uh, the roof is waterproof. 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 Okay. But there is a, a like a transparent. Transparent. Yeah. Transparent. Cover. 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 Transparent cover. So, uh, so located in the transition from land to the sea, you can see from here. This is the this is uh -huh. the sea, and this is the land. This is like um, uh, like a boat. Uh, this is a swing swinging. And like not too much, but it is stable. But little bit when there is a too much waves of the um, sea. So there is little bit swing, swing, swinging of the dome, the museum. So these people like located in the water connected by the bridge in pontons. Pontons, uh, pontons mean that the, there is a um, uh, there is a plastic or there is a uh, wood. And the past area there they were using the wood for the swinging of the object on the water. So now they are using like the the tires. Like so we, that we kind can of see. Okay, it's yeah, so yeah, font, yeah. So this is the, these people, these engineers, uh, caught the uh, the the light of the, uh, like the sun rays passing through the domes, through the museum. This is called the rain of the light. This, uh, I will let you show that there is a uh, when, when you see in the day there is a light uh, like a rain of the lights. Rain of the lights is coming to the museum. So the another is the effect of the sunlight. Uh, seemingly random. Geometry arrangement. Why this? Uh, uh, this part because of the, there is a uh, sorry. There is a different arrangement of geometry. Like there is a uh, uh, different porosity of the structure. So uh, I will let you show that there, these are uh, more porosity, and this is less less porosity. So there uh, there uh, there is a um, different kind of uh, holes in the dome. So uh, the different kind of lights is coming to the museum. So this is called the rain of light. So under the dome, 55 individual buildings constructed make up the museum city. This is called the museum city. Basically, this dome is just for the construction for the beauty and aesthetics of uh, the to become a museum more uh, attractive for the. So the space underneath the roof is not totally enclosed. No, no, no. This is just actually for open. Open. Space. This is open space. Uh, under the under the dome, there is 55 uh, individual um, museum constructed. Okay. So the dimensions you can see uh, per, uh, permanent structure steel. Why uh, they use permanent structure steel? Because this dome is constructed uh, uh, offsite. Some of the dome is constructed offsite, not onsite. Then they bring to the onsite. So there are millions of structure used offsite. And when they bring this uh, dome to the onsite, so there is just remain 1100 by the 27 nodes. Nodes mean when you have just this is the one node, and you have uh, multi uh, uh, struts. So this is called one node. So overall element, uh, you can see the figure and weight uh, 12,000 tons is the weight of the. Uh, this we are just talking about the dome because the paper is just written about the the dome, not about the museum. So the area is uh, 24,000 square meters. It takes two to four hours to visit the whole museum. <laughs> if you look in each and every thing. So this is the structure. This paper, is, uh, in this paper, they focus in the geometrical aspects of the technical design of clearing. This is what this is called clearing. This is whole clearing. This is the clearing. You can see this is aluminum clearing. This is stick. Basically, this is the support. Okay. Steel is the support, and this is the domes uh, clearing. Uh, we will look forward that the steel structure covered with the cladding more than 7,850 stars. They're simple stars. They they make this these stars. You can see this is the nodes. Aha. Uh -huh. The kings. The these are the kings. Four pointed stars. Yeah, four pointed okay. stars. And this spread. The, when they connected the stars together, they split like uh, 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 7,850 stars. So they cover all the domes of the uh, steel dome. So the dome has four support only. 
This drum is just uh, sustained about the four support only. How long With, is the span? Yeah. Uh, sorry. How long is the span? I Between don't. columns. They, they don't didn't mention. Yeah. But th this is just uh, so, uh, with strand with four support, like okay. one, two, three, four, four support. Right? So the, arra uh, the arranging a socialist triangle repeated and rotated uh, to the form a system to square on of the one. So this is talking about the square. Uh, this, this this is the basic uh, star. So the another star is connected here, another star is connected here, another star is connected here. So the octagonal uh, square, like they become uh, a very huge um, upper support for the uh, of the aluminium. The dome steel, the dome steel, you have to understand that basically this is the steel structure. As you mentioned that we have four cladding above the steel and four cladding below the steel. So we have this is the basic steel structure. We have the first, we have the first cladding, the second cladding, like first, first, second, first, second, third, and first, second, third, fourth. These are the four cladding. This is the basic okay. structure yeah, of yes. the steel. Yeah, yeah, we can see from here. So I think they're not visible. Layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. This is the basic structure. Wow. So on top of the steel yeah. frame, there are four, four below and four below. below. Yeah. Four. So, so this is the basic uh, uh, construction of a one star. This is a basic construction of one star. You can see the comparison. This is a hue and this is a star. So the hue is the star is so big. Uh, the bars, the bars as assemblies of the extruded profile were connected to the four corner of the inner spot of say It's uh, talking about this this condition of this uh, uh, star. They, they, they are connected with each other. Uh, tips. Tips of the star connected to their never to form a continuous structure. They, they are just talking about this this current that uh, in uh, more than one or two star connected, so they just uh, uh, make a continuous structure for the uh, dome. So we have just two slides. It's okay. Uh, Asymmetric tip of the tip of the star and star to star. It's okay. You can see from here. This is the tip of the star. So how they construct it? The star, uh, the star uh, strut, or you can see the, st uh, um, the bars, these are constructed here, this is the uh, handwork and the uh, offset of the uh, site. So they just uh, combine these um, uh, bars and this strut to, uh, to make a one star. This is the basically uh, original picture, this is the uh, design picture uh, and the source of air. This is the basic, basic structure when they were uh, designing it and uh, making uh, offset of the uh, an offset. So th this is the basically the star tab when connected to another tab. So as I mentioned that we have four cladding. So this is the one cladding. Uh, I um, mentioned that we have a different kind of process of the dome. Uh, some uh, um, in some swing there are a big hole. In some swing there is a, a small hole. So how they constructed? They have just used four kind of. Uh, process of the uh, like this is a low density this is um, more than this density like you can uh, see bigger than bigger so slim medium wide and mixed so they combine uh, the four uh, stars but make all the mixed are the same type or they have different way of mixing. they have different okay yeah so this is the basic uh, machine which they were using to uh, make this uh, stars So the design of the connection required the consideration of kink angle. Uh, basically, the kink angles when uh, when two stars is connected, there is an angle. Like this is two star. When this connecting, this this angle is called kink angle. So kink angle, the tip of the profile and the inner angle of the bars connected at the tip, as well as the force transfer between the star. So they are just talking about the force. So there is a kink angle. So they consider the force, the kink angle for the uh, support of the um, from the steel to the uh, aluminium uh, um, stars. So connecting the cladding of the support structure. Basically, you know, uh, we uh, have to discuss about the how they connecting uh, connected the um, cladding to the steel structure. Basically, during the design, the engineer invented that if we uh, if we sub, uh, if we clade all the four uh, kind of stars on a steel structure, there will be a uh, like a not stable force. So they just uh, introduce that, uh, like you can see, this is the steel structure. This is steel structure. Some of the uh, star they connected on the steel. To uh, some of the star uh, supported by the steel. 
but you can see this is the tabs, which is not uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, like uh, full linear. You can see like uh, not coincident. Yeah, no coincident with the, the with the switch uh, structure. But the, uh, so in this case, they they just support two layer of cladding without any uh, steel support. So this some uh, star is uh, supported by the steel structure, and uh, some uh, rest of the star is uh, supported by the uh, the companion another uh, from the below uh, cladding. So this is the four cladding. Uh, so you can see there is a uh, different kind of porosity. Uh, there is a uh, this is the less poro uh, more porosity, and this is the less porosity. Different so this is the basic structure. Digital model of layer aluminum cladding connected with steel structure. Different porosity introduced for the rain of the light. You can see different porosity introduced for just for the rain of the light, just for designing. So this is the mathematical spec. They use the uh, Rhino. Uh, and Gloss Hooper uh, for designing of this. You can see this is a uh, design monster, and they just use uh, they use a metal as well, but uh, most of the work they're done by the um, uh, Gloss Hooper. Okay. Because I I think it just this is uh, a script. Yeah, this is this, this is, uh, Python or I don't know because uh, okay. or maybe this, this video video just. Okay. Uh, um, I think I, I, I copy it uh, from the video uh, okay. from the person who just designed this uh, okay. uh, uh, blog. Yeah. So this is the YouTube uh, video. Thank you. Okay. So you have link to this video. Yeah. 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 And uh, da, 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 da. It's wow. Okay. So it's already for twenty. Or. Uh, Maybe we'll postpone your presentation. It's okay. Okay. And uh, I want to do something because I think it's important for you to be familiar with scripting. Some of you have already know how to script in C sharp. I will ask the assistant over there if tomorrow afternoon the room is available, and then it is optional. If you want to do more exercise, then you come tomorrow afternoon. And it's okay. You, you can practice at home, whatever, whenever you have time. Okay. So I will check if the classroom is available. Because before they ask me if I, I have additional class uh, tomorrow, okay? And I say no, because we have workshop in uh, November 2nd and 3rd. And that already more than the required class, the course hours we have. But I think if you need more exercise and you want to do some practice together with me, okay, then we meet each other again here if the classroom is available. Okay, so wait for me for two minutes and I will ask. Yeah, and 
then you can go back and take a look and try yourself. And then, okay, if you think it is good to come here tomorrow afternoon, then I will be here. And then we do more exercises, and I will try to help you as much as I can. Okay? And if you have something else to do, okay, it's fine. It's only to come. Okay, it's optional. Okay, so. Oh, we call it a day. Sorry? Tomorrow? The same time. Uh, one twenty. Okay. Okay, because we need we really need really need to prepare ourselves. Okay, for, for the workshop. I think the workshop will be great. If you take a look at the video uh, that long uh, has prepared. Then you will see, you will have some expectation. Okay. Especially if you are interested in some kind of uh, simulation for biomimicry simulation. Okay, okay. The, the program he did is actually simulate something that grows. This is the work we can see that there is no effect of the shift icon. This is what is this component? This is this is the line. This is the line. I just I just lens 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 like bar lens lens like like A I N E. L I or line, okay, line with two points. So then I was uh, like uh, divide and like uh, I have to go there. What is the meaning of this? This one, this one, this icon. Curve, curve, curve. When when you put curve here, there is a multi-color curve code on on the line, okay? But even we didn't define the the the, the point. Why it should be like? You should be fine. Just we put the curve, and we put like we we give the we give the output to the curve. So this is an exercise that did before. Or no, no, this is before. Before. But so you did it. You did it. I did it. Yeah, I did it. But uh, because something something new was planned and changed, so we didn't get. Like what is the mean of curve? I just curve. Oh, no. It's a, it's a curve. Like professor. So this this is this is the line okay yeah this is ln this is ln so, okay when i draw curve okay when i give i uh, give the input to this there was line okay there was line there, these are lines okay these are lines like okay. this these are lines a line so when when i give the input line to this this is a kind of curve yeah this is automatically uh, 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 like inserted the, this no. this curve it's not beginning. automatically you you get this point only you have this uh, divide a curve okay let me show it to you okay. let me show it to you oh sorry i should terminate 